All right, folks, look, I'm back, <laughs> as promised. Uh, in this video, I'm just gonna show some seven inch singles, little 45 records that I got on a couple of digs in the last two weeks or so. Um, I'm obsessed now with <laughs> collecting uh, 45s. Uh, it is a it is a big part of my collection now, except it, it, it's getting a little crazy. Uh, my 45 collection has grown like like, like weeds, like wildfire. <laughs> I have way too many of them, and I love collecting them. I absolutely cannot stop myself from buying them, especially the picture sleeves, 45s. Those are my favorite, and basically the only thing I collect these days as far as um, 45s um, they're just so much fun to collect and I love listening to them too I don't mind getting up all the time to change the damn album or record I should say it is an obsession of mine lately so last time I went out I bought a lot of 45s that's why I want to put them on a separate video I don't want to show them with the 12 inch or that video would be an hour long so anyway let's get into some 45s shall we uh, because I found some 45s that I really love. Most of them are 80s, maybe one or two 70s. But anyway, let's get going. This is this one I really want to start off with. It is from Prince. The song is Nothing Compares to You. This is, and he sings it this time, not Sinead O'Connor. Uh, this is a limited edition 7-inch uh, that I was lucky enough to score. Uh, on the A side, it just has the edit of Nothing Compares to You. B side, of course, would have the full length version. It's such a good song. He sounds so good on it. And it's on the Warner Brothers label. Oh my God, he sings this song so awesome. And of course he wrote it. It's just someone else became famous by it. Uh, but I'm so glad I have a vinyl copy of him singing this song. Um, it sounds great. It absolutely sounds great. And I love the cover too, and the back cover. <laughs> it's it just so good. Um, if you see this in the stores and you're a Prince fan, drop what you're doing and buy it, because <laughs> it's just a, a great thing to have in the collection. A, every Prince fan should have it. All right. Next up is Eric Clapton. Two songs from his album August. This is like a sampler, 45 for the songs. Holy Mother and Behind the Mask. Uh, really good songs from August, nothing on the back here. Um, the song, the album August, or is the album these songs are from. Uh, this album was actually produced by Phil Collins. And the album came out, I believe, in 86. And uh, Phil Collins also plays drums on the album too. And, and so he drums on both these songs. And they actually did a short tour with Eric Clapton during, it was the summer of 86 when they were promoting the album uh, or it might have been late summer or whatever I remember he they were doing some shows uh, they came to Oakland the closest to here I did, actually did want to go to that but you know I was only 16 I didn't have much money and I was saving up to buy a Genesis ticket which came months a few months later uh, Genesis came to Oakland and I saved up my money to buy a ticket to that show and I'm glad I did because that show was awesome but just a few months before that he did come to Oakland and it was Eric Clapton's drummer and they played a bunch of classic Eric Clapton songs. Uh, Holy Mother is a gorgeous, gorgeous song and I always did love that song. Behind the Mask is pretty cool too. Michael Jackson actually once sung the song Behind the Mask. It was supposed to be on the Bad Album and I guess he decided against it and not put it on the record but I did hear versions on YouTube of Michael Jackson singing the song. I guess Clapton liked it and put it on his record he slapped his vocals on it and it became an Eric Clapton song all of a sudden. So really cool song, a really cool collection of songs from Eric Clapton. I love this 45. Oh, it's, it's on Duck Records, show the label. It's Duck Records, really cool. So glad I got that. <coughs> this is probably the only non 80s song in this batch here. It's from ELO, uh, Confusion and Last Train to London. Um, some really cool songs from ELO. They're going to be in town next month. I really should get off my lazy ass and try to score a ticket because I would love to see ELO. I love this band. I love collecting their vinyl too. And uh, this is kind of in rough shape. As you can see, the top is has a lot of wear on it. But it was a picture sleeve, something I don't see very often. 
It only cost me a dollar to score this. And it's on Jet Records is the label. Really glad I did get it. Really cool little 45. All right, two from Def Leppard. We have Rocket, we have Hysteria. Um, I love the album Pyromania, and I believe they did put out a box set of uh, their earlier albums, Remastered Pyromania being included in that batch of albums. But <clears throat> this is not Remastered, this is the old stuff. This is the, the OG stuff here. And uh, really glad I scored these. I don't see these particularly very often in 45. As far as 45s go, I don't see these very often. I usually see Pour Some Sugar On Me or Armageddon It, and those to me are a dime a dozen, but I never see these two songs, Hysteria and uh, Rocket. Rocket has a live version of the song Women on the B-side, and it's on the um, Mercury label, so is the other one. Uh, Hysteria has the song uh, Ride Into the Sun as uh, a B-side, and some cool pictures of the band on the back of it. Uh, so that's why I pulled the trigger on these because I, I really don't see these very often and I do love the cover art on both of them. They look absolutely badass. So <clears throat> I think I probably do have all the uh, Def Leppard Hysteria singles on 45 now. Maybe I'm missing a couple. Maybe I'm missing one. Um, I think I'm missing Animal. I'm, I, I'm, but I might have that. I got to look again. I got so many 45s, I can't keep track of them sometimes. But uh, really glad to score these from Def Leppard. These were, these were cool finds. This was a real cool find. And I love the cover. It's from Aerosmith, Love in the Elevator. Look at that. Well, let me take it out of the, the clear sleeve here. See, a little better. It doesn't, it doesn't reflect so much light. That is a cool cover. I like the animation. That, that's a cool, that's a cool uh, picture there. And I picture the band in the back. Um, when this song first came out, I absolutely love it because I, I love the drumming on it. Uh, Joey Kramer is actually a really cool drummer, very underrated too. Um, always loved the way that guy played. Uh, it's on Geffen, it's a label. Uh, very awesome song. Um, like I said, I listened to it to death when it first came out. Um, and I also love the album Pump. It was a, I thought it was a good album. This was a this was a very popular album and record when it came out back in the day, late 80s. Uh, I mean, the video was constantly being played on MTV, and this song in Jamie's Got a Gun was constantly on the radio. Uh, but nice to have a 45 of it, and that cover is so cool. So glad I glad I got it. <clears throat> All right, this is from Scritti Politti, The Perfect Way. I had this on 45 already, <laughs> um, and it's a good song. I do like the song. Uh, but this was something a little different. The packaging was so good on this. There's this mini gate fold here, and I thought that looked really nice. It made me want to get it. <laughs> I'll show you the, the actual 45 of it. it. has a custom label on it. Mine just had like, the one I scored long ago was the, um, just had the record label, record company label on it. So this is something a little different. <laughs> And it has an you know, extended version of the same song, The Perfect Way, on the B-side. So we got the radio version, the extended version on sides A and B, and it came with a poster. It did come with a poster, which made it pretty cool. Unfortunately, I don't like the poster all that much, because <laughs> it's a picture of the lead singer. Uh, yeah, I believe Scritti Politti was a band, right? But yet we only have a picture of the singer here on the poster, but oh well, whatever, that was the 80s for you. It was all image. <laughs> it was all image. But uh, still a cool find. I'm glad I got it. And when you fold these things, folding them back is a pain in the ass. I swear to God. <laughs> swear to God. How do you do this? Um, I should figure this out off camera, but there we go. I got it now. Uh, <laughs> I'm terrible at that. You know, I take some, I post her out. I try to refold it exactly the way it was before, and it takes me a while to figure it out. <laughs> that was actually pretty fast for my standards. <laughs> but anyway, Scrooge Politti, The Perfect Way, I always thought that was a cool song. It's the only song I really know from them. I don't know much about this band other than this one song. But this was a cool 45 to collect from them. And um, the packaging is so rare and cool looking that had to score it. Had to score it. 
Uh, okay, this one's from Duran Duran, Union of the Snake. And uh, I believe this is a Japanese uh, pressing of the 45 of the single. And here's the back of it. Um, but I do love the label, it's the EMI label. And that looks pretty cool, so real glad to put this into the collection. And the B-side is uh, Sacred October, which I don't think I've heard yet because I've only heard the A-side. I've yet to hear the B-side song, but um, but a really cool copy, uh, Japanese comp pressing, like I said, and uh, that was cool to put in the collection. I like collecting things like that, and I always did like the song from uh, Duran Duran. And cl collecting their stuff is really fun too, so there we go. Ah, one of my favorite songs from Steve Winwood is Valerie. We all know it. We all know the song. Valerie, call me. <laughs> I, I apologize for my terrible scene. And the bat, the B side, uh, taking back to the night. Oh, talking back to the night. God, talking back to the night is the B side song. So another song I like from Steve Winwood. So uh, this made this a cool, a cool uh, score. It's on the Island label. So great song. And this is the Why Not. <laughs> I like the song Why Not Buy It. Human League, Don't You Want Me. We've all heard the song. <laughs> and uh, this was a decent copy of the 45, so why not? Why not? So there it is. Ah, now this one I was really happy to find from the SOS band, The Finest. Uh, I bought this album. Uh, the album is called Sands of Time from the SOS band, and that was the cover of it. Um, I bought uh, the vinyl album back in 1986 when this first came out. It was either 86 or 85. And it's one of the records, because I love that album so much, it's one of the very few records that survived that I had my little, my little tiny collection back in 86. And then I would eventually trade most of them for CDs like everybody else did when CDs first came out. But this is the one that survived, and I didn't trade it because I love it too much. <laughs> and, yeah, this is a great song. It, it was produced by Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. And then after this, they would go on to produce Janet Jackson's Control album. And we all know how that turned out. Uh, but this is when they first left Prince's family, I guess you could say. Uh, Prince didn't like the idea of them working with artists outside his family and uh, when they took on this gig uh, they were pretty much fired by Prince because it upset the, the, <laughs> his royal badness and they became independent producers and uh, it really worked out great for him and this is a great song from a great album um, it, it kinda, this is the kind of album that let you know what was to come with Janet Jackson because it has that sound to it the finest from SOS band just a great song all right, I showed the uh, Andy Taylor album in my last video. Uh, I bought the album Thunder. This is the actual only song I knew from Andy Taylor. Uh, it was called Take It Easy. It was from the movie American Anthem back in the 80s. If you don't remember the movie, don't worry about it. It was easily forgettable. <laughs> uh, B-side is Angel Eyes. Um, the best thing about the movie American Anthem was Janet Jones because that woman looked hot in this movie. I only saw this movie once back in the 80s when it came on HBO and yeah, Janet Jones is the hot looking woman. <laughs> but this is always a good song. Uh, I always did like this song from Andy Taylor. I wish it was on the album Thunder, it isn't, but a really good song from the movie. And uh, it's on the Atlantic label, so cool score. All right, this one's from Sammy Hagar. Um, this is called Give to Live. Uh, this is, this was supposed to be his last solo album because at this point he had joined Van Halen. They had already released 5150 and it was a big success. And he still had one more um, solo album. I guess he was con contractually obligated to make or something like that. I don't know what the deal was. So he made this right after 5150. And in fact, Eddie Van Halen plays bass on most of that record. And I think he plays bass on this song. And I always, thought, I always thought this was a good song. And during the Van Halen concerts, he would sing an acoustic version of this song, Give to Live. <clears throat> then the song Eagles Fly. And um, 
Uh, I always thought this was a cool song from Sammy Hagar, so real glad that I found the 45 of it. It's in a good, it's a good copy too, and it's on the Geffen label, so very nice there. Speaking of Van Halen, we got two of them, <laughs> two Van Halens, uh, all from the same album too, 1984. Uh, we have Panama, which is a really I love that cover because it's from the Panama video, of course. Nice band photos in the back. <clears throat> One of my favorite Van Halen albums. And it's on the uh, Warner Brothers label, of course. It's back with the song Drop Dead Legs. Such a cool song. Panama has been overplayed a lot on uh, classic rock radio. So when I hear it, I usually change station because I've heard it like a million times. But it is cool to have this. I doubt I will listen to this all that much, but it's a good song. Uh, I'll listen to this one a lot more. And the next one was I'll Wait. Very good song from 1984. Such a great album that was. Love that album. Uh, also on the um, Warner Brothers label, back with the song Girl Gone Bad. Two good songs from 1984. Probably two of my favorite songs from the album 1984. So, well, those were good scores, so glad I picked both of those up. Add to the Van Halen collection. <clears throat> All right, something I already had and I'm buying again. Uh, Rush Power Windows. Um, I already had this one. It was it had a real cool gatefold uh, edition, but this one has, on the B side, the live version of Red Sector A, live recording of that song. And the other 45 I had of this did not have that song on there, so uh, something a little different. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger. These things only cost me a couple of dollars. And again, Mercury Label. Um, great song, Power um, He's saying Power Windows. Great song, Big Money. Uh, great album, Power Windows. But the song, Big Money, was always one of my favorites. Uh, it was, I guess, I guess it kind of was my introduction to Rush because. The video was being played on MTV a lot back in 1985, and that's when I first was getting into music, period. And um, that song really hooked me, and um, was kind of my intro to Rush, and I would discover them a lot more later. Uh, but I think this is, might have been the first Rush song I heard in my sheltered life back then. So really cool pickup there. <clears throat> uh, one of my favorite Journey songs is Who's Crying Now, so real cool to score it on a 45. And I love the album cover artwork. That looks so sensational. Another song that they do play a lot on um, classic rock radio, but it is so nice to have uh, this <clears throat> on a 45, because uh, I don't see it very often. Back with the awesome song, Mother, Father, from the Escape album. It's just such a cool, such a cool score. Two great songs from that album, it's on the Columbia label. So, very nice there. So, very good score there from Journey. Okay, not a very big Billy Idol fan, but I gotta admit, this is a good song. It's Sweet 16. His voice sounds really good on this song, and that made me glad to score this little 45 of it. Uh, like I said, I'm not a big fan of his music. There's a couple songs of him I do like. There's a label. Um, this is probably my favorite song. He did a, co a version, a cover version of The Doors, L.A. Woman, which I thought he did a good job with. There's a couple other songs I like from him, but um, I think I just, I'm just not a fan of him. But I gotta admit, when he does put together some good songs, I, I'm all behind it. <laughs> all right, uh, from Huey Lewis in the News, Heart and Soul. Uh, cool 80s song. I like the cover, and I've never seen it before, so I went ahead and grabbed it from the album 4. Great song. And uh, back with the song You Crack Me Up. Uh, I just thought that was a cool picture of Hugh Lewis. And I just thought, hey, that makes a good cover. I do like the song. I do like the band. So why not? Oh, this is a good song. <laughs> Heart, What About Love. Uh, Self-titled album, Heart. Uh, which came out, I believe, in 84, 85. I'm not sure on the year anymore. Um, Always love that song, and Wilson's voice sounds absolutely amazing on this song. So it was always one of my favorite songs from them. And it's a promo, so you get the white label from Capitol. It's a shame that there's a feud between the sisters and Hart is on ice right now. 
I don't know if there ever will be another Heart album. I hope so, if I can see him on tour again. But, um, man, this is a great song. Great song. All right. I had to give this a try again. <laughs> Genesis taking it all too hard. This is the third 45 I've got of this. All of them costed me a dollar. This one only costed a dollar. Now, if you see in the back, it says, taking it all too hard. Back of the song, Silver Rainbow. Now, I have two other copies of this in my collection. None of them have Silver Rainbow on it. <laughs> it's just promo and uh, just has taken it all too hard on both sides. Uh, this one is not a promo. It has had that nice custom label from the uh, Genesis album. I call it the Mama album, actually. Um, and it actually does have Silver Rainbow on the B side. So this is, I finally got it right. <laughs> I finally found a copy with Silver Rainbow on it. I don't know why I was obsessing over that. I can just pull my record out. I could pull this album out of my collection and just listen to Silver Rainbow there. But I was determined to find uh, the, the copy with Silver Rainbow on it finally did. I don't know what I'm going to do with my other two. I'll probably just keep them anyway. But cool song from Genesis. I always did like the song. It's a nice laid back slow tune. I like it. All right. Uh, Bananarama, The Wildlife from the movie. Uh, from the soundtrack of the movie, The Wildlife, which was a movie that came out in the 80s, was always one of my favorite 80s movies, The Wildlife. <clears throat> the interesting about this movie was the soundtrack to the movie The Wildlife was done by Eddie Van Halen. And uh, this is around the time I think he was writing the 1984 album. And so it's a lot of instrumental tracks from Eddie Van Halen that makes up that, rec uh, that soundtrack. And a couple of years back, I had downloaded all those tracks and burned them to a disc. And, and it's the closest thing I'll ever get to an Eddie Van Halen solo album. <laughs> of all instrumental rock tracks. It's act there are actually some pretty cool stuff on there. You'll hear, you'll hear early versions of the song Good Enough, which was on 5150. If you watch the movie and listen to the sound, tr the, the score, you can hear a very early version of the song Right Now, which was on the four Unlawful Carnal Knowledge album with Sammy Hagar as a singer. But this is a good song too from Bananarama, The Wildlife. I gotta find a 45 of Cruel Summer. That's actually my favorite song of theirs. So interesting little piece to have in the uh, collection. Pat Benatar, a little too late. For some reason I'm just getting into collecting her 45s. I always loved her voice. Um, back in the day, this woman was a hit machine. Everything she put out was an instant hit. <laughs> uh, she just ruled the airwaves and ruled MTV in the late, early 80s and mid 80s. You could not escape Pat Benatar if you tried. But she had some great songs. This was another great song, a little too late. Always did like that song. Back with the song, Fight It Out. So, real cool songs from the album, Get Nervous. Really glad I got that. All right, the last thing I'm going to show you is from Phil Collins. <laughs> Something I doubt I'll ever spin. I just wanted to get it because it's a cool little novelty item to have. It is this weird shaped picture disc. Uh, it contains the songs One More Night. And on the B side, um, I Like The Way. So this is I mean, this is the record part of it right here, the 45 part of it, and then this weird shape of him standing. It comes with this little thing that you fold up, and you can sit it on top of it like a platform like that, and you can have Phil Collins staring down at you. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but you know, I have a few obsessed Phil Collins fans online that I'm friends with and I've seen this in their collection always wonder where they got it and I finally found it so really cool weird shaped 45 <laughs> uh, I doubt I'll ever fold this thing out I just want to keep them together as a set just to say that I got it <laughs> um, just something cool to have I'm a big Phil Collins fan since I was 15 and that just seemed like a rare item to collect really dig that all right, that's it, folks. That's the 45s from the last two digs I've done. It's a lot, wasn't it? So if you hung out with me this much, God bless you. <laughs> God bless you, because I know that's that's quite a lot to sit through. Anyway, I uh, hope you're all doing well. Leave me some comments, and I will get back to all of you. Have a great one, and I'll see you at the next video.